This is Trophy Dark Blackberry Jam Part 2. We are in Ring 3. Nima and Kiku had just opened up a passageway to this silvery gate. And you heard a voice saying something about being hungry. I don't remember exactly what it said. But you're kind of, you know, after after fighting your way past these deep brambles, you know, this dense foliage is thinning out. And this path, you know, perhaps maybe you know instinctively, maybe you actually know, but you this path is twisting towards the heart of the patch. The sweet scent of crushed blackberries gives way to the sickly scent of rot. And there are tiny adders slithering about your feet, climbing the brushes and vines all around you. You see this gate twisted and twined about it is an ancient and decrepit snake. It is the Bramble's gatekeeper. Its milky eyes shine in the shadowed Bramble. And despite all of its squirming, it is trapped. You can tell it can't move. Time has embedded vines and thorns in its flesh and every ripple of muscle underneath its hide echoes with a spasm of pain and a dribble of blood. I want to kick off by having you both make a ruin roll. As soon as I pull up a tire roller. Right. Let's do ruin. Kiku got a four, so you're okay, Kiku, because your current ruin is four. Nima, yours is going up though, and that puts you at five, which we'll talk about in a bit. What was the condition that you had previously, Nima? Uh, the condition was the button. So it was that's uh, right. Yeah. Ev evidence of the sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. As a way of memorializing your ruin increase. I think that you are actually getting a little bit of like ambient memory, like genetic memory or familial memory mm. of previous people from your family, generations past. What happened the last time you faced the adder? Mm. So I think that there's, I'm still puzzling through this, but I'm just going to get it out there and get started on it, uh, that there are, the way that this kind of like gets passed on through this family is through its like cloth. Um, so this is the type of thing where like it's stitched in, it's a pattern uh, in some particular like ream of cloth. And so that's always hanging around. It's not something that the family talks about, but it's something that's in existence. Um, I think what happened, uh, what I see in this cloth is like someone struggling with an adder um, and cutting off its head, but that not being a good thing. So maybe there's, um, and that's what I'm trying to like piece together, like how that looks in the the pattern of the cloth, but you know, a, a person intertwined with a, with this adder uh, and its head kind of like slicing off and maybe the like blood of the adder <laughs> is coming into the, like, there's like a, a, almost like a rainbow kind of like stream in between the neck of the adder and the mouth of the person, um, that it somehow, and you can kind of see it, see it sort of like defouling, uh, the person who has slayed the adder. Um, so that's like echoing through my mind is like that cloth, that fabric. Maybe I'm even like where like there's some element within my robes of like a, a strip of that cloth and I look down um, and I'm reminded of it. And yet here the ancient adder is. 
please, please bring me something to eat, clever young ladies. I am hungry and the little animals don't come to me anymore to help me in my plight. I am thirsty, but not a bug nor a rat will share their blood with me. Help me and I will open the gate. Kiku, I will tell you here at this point. You hear in the distance that other party of hunters and you can hear them saying, the gate should be somewhere around here. They're not quite here yet, but they're, they're in the vicinity. So what do you both do? Here we should also talk about Ruin 5 <laughs> real quickly. Mm -hmm. You are now entitled to do reduction rolls, Nima. Oh, which yes, means, I am. <laughs> yeah, which means if you betray Kiku, you get to lower your Ruin. Betray uh, Kiku or, well, it's still a betrayal, like serve the, the Bramble's purposes, right? So yeah. yeah. Anyway, so what are we doing right now? I'm going to do a reduction roll, in fact. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can kind of like mm, act. It's almost like acting naive here um, and just kind of like saying like, oh, Kiku, like I don't know what this what this adder could be thinking of as far as food you you've grown up in the the woods in the forest uh you know what these types of creatures um like to eat can you can you find it and give it to him i i am lost without your guidance at this point i've been your guide up until this point um i need you kiku to be my guide uh as we go on uh we are we are in far deeper than i know what to do uh as i'm like <laughs> like just stroking that like strip of fabric that has the uh the the adder ordeal um uh stitched into it i love it uh make the make the reduction roll let's see if kiku picks up on what's happening here <laughs> uh you got a three so kiku you don't have any reason to think that this is anything other than naivete uh and your and your ruin goes down so kiku how do you respond I think that Kiku is mightily distracted because from getting through the brambles, the birds have followed her here. And as she's trying to listen to this ancient snake and figure out what Nima's talking about, she's just got birds constantly diving at her head. It's always like feet first. They get scratches on her face and she's trying really hard to focus. And the instinct to help this creature of the wood is there. And she does not like the hunters, specifically the leader of the hunter party that is encroaching. And so after puzzling over Nima telling Kiku that she should be the guide after she's been guided here by numerous people up until this point. Kiku just does a little like bob and weave and heads up to the snake, not quite close enough that it can reach. And she bows her head slightly and says, there is much blood coming down the path. Please let us through. And I and this other clever girl here will lead them running right into your open mouth. But she's saying this through a lot of like. <laughs> <laughs> so Nima doesn't actually understand what you're saying. No. <laughs> Good. Uh, let's make a risk roll. So Mike, what could go wrong here? <laughs> I think it's just that the snake can reach further than you think and lashes out. I think that's fair. Um, I think it there 
could the brambles have been moving and i think that there could be something interesting too of the the, the brambles that are like holding the adder in hold kiku in in some way as well yeah kiku becoming part of the gate would be pretty interesting too mm. okay let's talk dice do you have a relevant skill here kiku an excellent question i don't think you really do not based off what you've described it <laughs> uh nope weather not gonna help me here <laughs> yeah, i don't think so um a devil's bargain is what is your only chance for a light die um and if you don't take a lot of devil's bargain all you can roll is a dark die uh let's talk about devil's bargains i'm gonna go real hard and i'm gonna say no matter what no matter what by the end of this, you will take the adder's place on the gate mm. as gatekeeper. Um, I'll give you the reverse option that a, a bit of adder um, becomes part of you. Oh, you got the whole spirit thing going on. That could be fun. You just don't know what's inside the, the hearts of this adder. Only the shadow knows. No, Jason, I'm going to take you up on it. Uh, by the end of this, mm. uh, Kiku will be the new guardian of the gate. Very interesting. I think that you have to work that into your deal with the adder. Uh, but let's go ahead and I think it's just a light die for now. Go ahead and roll that. It's a five. Um, complication is more of an out of character thought, but basically the leader of the group is gonna make it past the snake, even if none of the rest of them do. And I can roll for a six if I add a dark down? You can, yeah. Nope, I'm going to keep with the complication. I think that that is as much success as we can expect when dealing with giant, somewhat dead snakes. Well, let's finish the deal then. So what do you say to get the adder to like basically let you be the lure for his meal? Kiku might see some subtle snake facial features move in such a way that makes her think that perhaps the snake isn't going to honor its end of the deal. And uh, Kiku then takes a perilous step or two even closer to the snake and says, I will free you. And I will watch the gate. Nima, you don't know what deal's being made here, but the adder, if creatures can be said to have a smile or to make a smile, it looks like that, though it is a deeply unnerving reptilian expression. It's milky eyes. You can tell that behind their sort of cataract, they're, they're trying to look at Kiku, at this thing they're making a deal with, like, but they can't quite make it out but nevertheless you hear the hinge as the gate moves aside and the adder the adder's body sort of like arcs between the two halves of the gate right or arches it's attached to both sides and you hear in the distance the hunters i hear it I hear the opening of a gate. It's close. And they're now moving in this direction. So that part's being settled. Do you both rush through the gate? Uh, Kiku will turn to, uh, oh, we didn't put our names on. I usually reference them. Sorry, Nima. <laughs> uh, Kiku will turn to Nima and say, noise, shout, loud. 
and then trying to make as much attention sounds. Tell them to hurry and follow. Come, 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 come. You may yeah, go through the gate. Yeah, I'll move through the gate. Do you spur on the hunters to come in your direction? Um, because I don't think you know the deal, right? Yeah, I don't really know the deal, but maybe like if I hear like just to like keep the sort of like ruse up, if Kiku is cacawing to like lure them in, maybe I like make a cacaw noise too uh, as I like walk through. <laughs> I love it. I love it. As you get past the portal, the adder dips its head around to face you both as you go through. And it says, I look forward to my meal and my reprieve. And you continue on. Beyond the portal, the blackberries gain a fluorescent quality. They actually illuminate a tunnel of bramble that plunges deep into the bramble's heart. Motes of friendly light bounce within this tunnel, beckoning you. The brambles are singing still, but the words have become utterly indecipherable. It's just feeling and noise. What feeling does it make you feel? Ramble vibes. I think Hiku is very bristled, like um, like a bird in a birth bird bath, where they just like poof all of her feathers and hackles, and even the when I say feathers, it's the spirit that's attached itself to me is starting to uh, struggle restlessly. Um, I think we've talked about Nima like viewing things as kind of like this puzzle to solve, this like puzzle box and not so much having that like emotional uh, tie to what's going on. But I think that like the feeling is just like the growth of Bramble is about connectedness. And it feels like that's the feeling is that the puzzle, even though it hasn't been solved, is starting to intertwine and like make sense and have the the appropriate connections it can all be like followed through at this point nice so passes ring three let's take a quick break like three minutes we'll come back and do ring four ring four The fluorescent passage lit by luminescent berries moves you into a twisted cavern. The walls and ceiling of the cavern are all made of bramble where thin blue light captures the forms of playing children. These are the children that the town forgot about. They go about their games, smashing blackberries, and scooping up the black goo to deposit it in a slow moving stream that drains into the center of the clearing. You see a figure, the Lady of the Bramble. She is imposing, made of twisting vines and white petals. Where her waist meets the wall of the bramble, her form melts into it. She's able to move as the wall squirms and shifts, carrying her around the edge of it. And she says, in a voice that sounds like susurrating wind, 
blowing through the bramble. Play, children, play. Look. Two more here to join the game. She stretches her limb out toward you both. Everything you could want is here. Laughter, joy, camaraderie, companionship. You have but to join the game. And the other children who you realize now, maybe more distinctly, are actually quite illuminated by this blue light, almost like they are the blue light. They say, yes, join us, join us. And they smash berries and the juice dribbles down into this little stream that funnels down into the center. It's funneling somewhere. Nima, what do you do? Actually, everyone, roll ruin first. Kiku is once again confused by all these silly human games. Indeed, with a three, and Nima has a two. You're both okay. Uh, Nima, what do you do? Um, I'm going to ask the lady of the bramble what the rules of the game are. She says, first you must eat, and then you must crush. Doesn't seem like much of a game, seems more like labor. She says, you are strong-willed. That is good. Maybe I will make you the minder of the other children. You know, in the grand cities, there are laws against this type of thing. We know no law here, except the law of the bramble, the law of the berry. I suppose it could not hurt to mind things for a short while. Kiku, what do you do? Uh, Kiku's gone over to the group of children beckoning, saying, yes, yes, join us. And kind of doing that strange sort of hopping bird-like dance that she does and reaches out a hand to see if she could maybe take the hand of another kid curiously. The child extends a berry juice smeared hand to you. You can take it, you can touch it. How does it make you feel? Kiku's still very curious. These blue lit children doing this crushing. And I think that driven by trying to solve the mystery as Kiku definitely is, is then going to continue to move through and, and touch each of the children quietly and, and leaving purple stains of her fingerprints behind. Make a ruin roll. That did it. You're mm -hmm. now up to five with a six ruin, or with a six ruin roll, you're up to five ruin. How is Nima actually? You can visibly see the bird spirit that is sort of overlaid, Kiku. How is the bird spirit changing as Kiku interacts with the children? Um, so it had seemed to be like more passive and just kind of like connected to Kiku. And at this point, like it's as if like the head is just like every time 
Kiku passes someone, like the head is going and like pecking at like whatever's in their hands or like whatever like berry like aspects and it's just kind of like twisting around in these very like abrupt and yeah um sudden ways to sort of like ghostly grab berries from and berry juice from the children kiku's behavior is pleasing to the lady of the bramble what about you nima i'm i mean i'm in this, what I believe to be, yeah, like overseer, <laughs> uh, camp manager role. So, um, what does that look like? Like, what do you start? What do you start doing? As you're seeing the um, kids, the kids are like playing, smashing berries, and you know. Yeah, and so I suppose I probably go into like seeing my parents as like overseers and some of these projects and that type of thing. So my hands are behind my back, you know, folded behind my back, and I'm kind of like pacing around. And I'm curious, like, do I get a sense of what the the end result or the end product of the quote unquote game is? You can see that the berry juice, which seems to be flowing at a much greater quantity than the children are actually squeezing out of their hands, it is indeed funneling down. And you can see there's this termination points going somewhere, but you can't mm. see where. What's at the bottom of it? Um I mean, I think I would be curious about that. I think I would, um, I don't know if there's a sense of like, does the lady of the bramble, like if I am like investigating it, is she getting more? Um... I think she's very pleased with you sort of like walking confidently among the children. I mean, I think you'll okay. see a couple of children at one point. They're like fighting over a, a sort of like one of them is a girl with a little apron. Mm. with blackberries in it right like mm -hmm. held out and this little boy is like trying to take them from her and she's like no no these are my blackberries and they're like kind of fighting what do you do you too so, there <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> stop that fighting uh we have a task we have a, a game to be played and you should be playing that game what will it take to get you to uh continue playing and yeah, this pleases the Lady of the Bramble. You can hear noises of wind blowing through her body, which is just a sort of vaguely woman-shaped vine, thorny vine with white flowers. You can hear the noises as the air blows through her bramble body. They are, it's almost like a like contentment, like, huh. Uh, uh, I think she's quite happy with the situation. Hmm. And yet the berry juice does flow in this strange blue glowing cavern. Kiko, after you're done making your rounds, what do you do? Uh, something about how real these children are, but how they're behaving even more strangely than the children in the village and even more strangely than the children we previously met kissing corpses in the bramble really sets Kiku's like skin crawling. And I think it's a result of this bird spirit becoming more and more restless. Kiku's starting to manifest a lot of that energy so it, she's not content to just merely watch these children crush berries she'll take handfuls of berries and crush them on the wall and start playing the game in a way that isn't it's very uh pablo picasso-esque like this was not how the game was created but she's gonna make it new again <laughs> jackson pollock-esque right mm -hmm. slinging yeah. blackberry juice mm -hmm. This is going on for a time. When there's a commotion, the sound of ripping vegetation, wails of pain in the distance from the direction you came in, and 
the man, I don't know if we named him last time, but his name is Domic, the one who was seeking the heart of the bramble. He bursts through the tunnel into this cave. He is pierced through with thorns and vines. The bramble has almost like augmented his limbs into sort of monstrous extensions. His face is contorted into a sort of cruel grimace. And he points this sort of brambly limb in the general direction of all of you and roars, I will have it, I will have its heart. And it slings one of these like brambly limbs down and just clubs one of the glowing children and their blood indistinguishable from the blackberry juice spatters on the ground and it's now just swinging limbs and the lady of the bramble is trying to defend the children but it's not working because he has form underneath his carapace <laughs> and she does not there's now crying and screaming and commotion and the two of you need to do something to either keep yourself safe or to keep the other children safe but in any case i want you both to roll ruin this could be it for you kiku kiku's okay with a three Nima's okay. Well, can't won't scroll. What'd you get, Nima? I got a five. So that is I am not equal to I am oh I am less. So I go up. Yep. So you're both at five. <laughs> okay. Yep, yep. The stakes are high. Nima, when this commotion, this chaos breaks out, I think a couple of the children who already sort of view you as a like minder or defender are like kind of hiding behind you, hiding behind your skirt, so to speak, and they're not wearing a skirt, but what do you do? Um, I think I'm going to try to uh, um, point Jomic to another dread like to the heart essentially i'm going to like say like the heart of the thing it is there go there leave this place alone this is not for you so the problem is there's only like two ways out of here there's the way yeah. he came which was a tunnel mm -hmm. and the funnel going down so where can do you i point? point to the funnel yeah you can point <laughs> to the funnel yeah. um it's down there. I've seen I've seen it. I am in charge here. And I know that whatever you seek, sir, is beneath air, not here, not amongst these fine workers of mine and the ladies. Kiku, one of the children spins in front of you as they go flying as Domic swipes them away and you see him now he's encased in the bramble and he's looking at you with these wide eyes and he raises his limb what do you do i think that in the initial melee kiku might have like jumped and avoided some of the impact of the limbs as he was flailing about. And had anybody been watching, they would have seen that she jumped a little too high and a little too far. Like it was, it was too exaggerated. And I think after hearing Nima say that not only does she know where the heart is, but she's leading this terrible excuse for a human to the very thing that I need most. I think that 
Kiku might whisper in the ears of one of the other children and encourage them to shout, she's lying, she's lying. Make a reduction roll. <laughs> What'd you get? Six light. A six. Um, Nima, you can tell that Kiku is absolutely working against you here. What do you do? Kiku's not a subtle creature. <laughs> um, I was kind of thinking of making my own reduction here. Um, and that is if um, Domic at all, like his attention turns towards the funnel, I'm going to like go behind and like jump on to his back and like that type of thing. And like, as like, it looks like I am like struggling uh, and fighting the the thing, I'm going to like whisper into its ear. Um, the wolf has the soul of a bird the birds that live in these brambles the the birds that are the heart of these brambles i like it make a make a reduction roll you're getting away with it it's just pure chaos the bramble exoskeleton of Domek, whether intentional or not, has pierced the pool of juice. And the pool of juice is actually widening to reveal the space beneath. In fact, the whole bramble is sort of being shaken apart. The lady of the bramble, it's almost like she's doing this place is being essentially ripped open to reveal what's below. Kiku. Damek is in no danger of reaching the heart because the Lady in the Bramble is essentially causing the Bramble all the bramble, including the bramble around him, to pull away. But he is under the influence of Nima, and he does take a final strike at you. What do you do to defend yourself? I leap, and I go for his eyes. My fingers clawing trying to remove his eyes from his face. Yeah, that's good. Um, you won't be able to, to defeat him or destroy him because that's against the rules, but you can certainly buy yourself, you can defend yourself and buy yourself some time. Let's do the risk roll. Do you have a relevant skill? Actually, what's what could go wrong here, Mike? He gets your eyes instead? I had a similar thought. Like, yeah, you just like, I think like bramble, you get like bramble pierced, right? Do you have a skill that will help you? Is it possible that the uh, omens might come into play as Kiku saw those very birds that were harassing her eating eyeballs of oh, I like birds? It. Oh, and that's, then that's very it's good. kind of yeah. foreshadowing for what yeah. I'm doing now. Yeah, that's quite good actually, yeah. You got one light dive. Devil's bargain. <laughs> I'm going to say that no matter what this encounter, you are too tainted to touch the heart of the bramble. Stakes. Um, I don't know. I'm on this eye thing. So my idea was that you see all eyes as berries um, that are ripe and uh, plump to eat. That's quite good. What do you think? I'm absolutely going to dine on some eyeballs. I mean, berries. I mean, it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> In Elden Ring, they're called grapes. Should be grapes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I love it. Uh, two light, one dark. Six dark. And a six light. And the dark I, always, the no, dark okay, always okay, outweighs okay. The, the light. <laughs> your ruin goes up, but uh, fortunately you did a reduction roll, so you're not out. But you fully succeed. And yeah, describe how you get them off your case. I think much like before, Kiku jumps much further than a small child should be able to and hangs in the air just a little bit before uh, feet landing on his collarbone as the brambles are starting to peel away from his body. And she almost as if the spirit, which you can see the wings now behind her and the talons extend from her own fingers as she uh, nimbly like too swiftly is able to pluck both of his eyes from his head the situation is quite chaotic nima the brambles being pulled away the hole is opening up rapidly and you're both going to be dropped into it but before you are you'll see that as the lady of the bramble pulls the bramble away Beneath the bramble is another bramble, but it's not bramble. It's snakes, balls of serpents, tangled and writhed in ecstasy. They're siserating hisses. Accompany you as you tumble down into the hole. The hole drops you. Into the pulsating heart of the Blackberry Bramble. Which we will talk about more. In ring five. So passes ring four. Let's take a quick three minute break. We'll come back and wrap it up. Ring five. As you are sucked down into the viscous sap, it fills your mouth, your eyes, and your ears. It actually starts to make your lungs burn for air. You finally pass through a gelatinous portal and fall heavily onto saturated sticky ground at the bramble's heart. You can see now that if you look above, you've actually fallen through a quivering membrane, dripping sweet blackberry juice. Nima, a beetle the size of your head, walks up to you in a friendly way, sort of using its four limbs or whatever beetles have to scoop blackberry juice into its maw. And then it says, in a kind of clicking voice, it says, it's very good to see you again. The old woman and the heart of the bramble await. And then it skitters off. Across the clearing that you've landed in, you see a small round basin atop a pedestal. There is an old woman sitting next to it, her tired hands scrubbing away the drops that fall incessantly upon her. She's clad in grimy robes. And there's an odd iron sword stuck in the earth next to her. Everything is covered in this sap that's trickling from above. But she keeps dipping a dirty rag into the water and it emerges clean and she wipes more and dips it into the water. An endless process. 
a little bit beyond her, there is a blackberry topiary in the form of a young boy crying out in anguish. He is looking up at the membrane. He's anchored to the ground by a blackberry cane and succulent blackberries hang off his form like bleeding sores. And in an outstretched hand is a single, very large, unripe carnelian berry. The old woman is muttering, filthy, filthy, filthy. Everything is filthy, everything is sticky. So sticky, so sweet, so dirty. And look at you, berry pickers, very filthy. Get over here, clean yourselves in the fountain. Come now. What do you do? I'm going to walk over. I feel like Nima has um, is still buying into the sense of authority uh, or the position of authority that has been granted to her by this great and um, um, benevolent Berryland. And so I'm just going to kind of like confidently like walk up to that sword um and tap the hilt of it with my fingers and um look Don't at touch the it woman. with your filthy filthy hands i just wiped that off and she wipes the spot that you touched mm. but more berry juice is dribbling down what says, is this then what is what and i tap it again it is a sword fool girl what do you think it is but why would a sword be here for doing things that need to be done with swords, obviously. I'm going to do you with a sword if you don't wash up in the basin. That seems rude. Perhaps, but nevertheless, you are a very filthy girl. She points to the basin. <laughs> Kiku, uh, what are you doing? Kiku does feel very sticky and would very much like to, to wash off uh, and... and clean um i think nima if you see kiku's eyes have once again gone that kind of like uh, black mirror kind of like uh she's no longer blinking she does look like maybe she's seen through different eyes now than she was before and she notices herself when she like looks into the basin of the and sees the reflection there might be a few feathers starting to sprout along her cheekbones and hair let's talk about the basin because when you well first of all Nima, are you looking in the basin also no kiku when you look in the basin you see the the gatekeeper it's looking back at you and it says don't forget your promise little bird you must come and assume my watch. Stand vigilant against those who would seek the heart of the bramble. The woman says, all right then, little bird, hurry up, wash up, wash up. Uh, Kiku. You hear another voice. Oh no. It's the topiary boy. He's saying, don't listen to her. Don't listen to the old woman. Do not put your hands in the water. You hear this too, Nima. You've come so far. You've suffered so much to take this, which I hold out before you. And it's the large carnelian berry. You know that the carnelian berry is the heart of the forest. And the old woman says, never mind him, never mind him. Wash up, wash up. 
Kiku's going to gesture to Nima. The water is, the water is funny. You should see, come see. Um, I, I've seen water. I've seen enough of the berry juice. I have my eyes on something else, Kiku. Just do as they say, wash up if you need to. We're both trying to make the same reduction roll, friend. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Kiku does not touch the water. She'll look back quizzically at the old woman again. Filthy bird. Filthy, filthy bird. Put a hand out for the rag. She hands it to you. Kiku starts to just, just the rag, not dipping it or plunging anything in the water, just starts to wipe her face. Because that's the dirtiest part. They always seem to care that the face is dirty. Nima, what are you doing? Um, I'm sitting down cross-legged next to the um to the woman and i'm kind of just kind of rocking slightly like back and forth and just like looking at that sword and looking at her and just keeping an eye on what kiku's doing and i kind of uh um i don't know half whisper over to the woman and i'm just like surely there must be something that i could trade you for that Blade. Oh, come off it, filthy brat. You can't even lift it. I'm sure I could if I had permission. Don't you want to go home? Don't you want to go back to your family? Even now, they're enjoying a fine dinner, wondering where you are, though, if I'm being honest, with no great sense of urgency. I will find my way back. I always find my way back. And they will scold me. There is only one way back, filthy girl. Clean yourself. But surely we could come to an agreement here. If I clean myself, may I take the sword? The topiary whispers to you both again. Ignore her. She is nothing. You came here for this, the heart of the bramble. She exists only to dissuade you, to turn you away from what you've both earned. And yet only one of you can claim it. During this exchange in which Kiku hears Nima call the old woman Shirley and doesn't understand. I would like to to make motions of cleaning while moving uh, behind the old woman's peripheral vision to come around and uh, make my way over to the boy. You can be doing that. Nima, do you have any interest in getting the heart of the the bramble. Um, not particularly. I think um my appetite here is to either slice the heart of it, um, or to if I am convinced to some degree, I'm convinced that like this will be the end of me. And so just buying a little time here. Um, the old yeah. woman will say quietly to where only you can hear her. Nima. She'll say, you know, your family didn't always send just girls. They sent boys too. The last one they sent was a boy. And she looks over her shoulder at the topiary. Don't you want to go claim your prize? Claim your birthright, your heritage, hmm? filthy girl. Or maybe you want to cut that which binds you 
looking at the sword. Mm -hmm. If you think you can lift it, go ahead. <laughs> I doubt you can, though. Wash yourself and be done with this. Well, I feel no need to wash. And I get up and I'm going to try and um, get that sword out of that rock. It comes out well enough and you oh. can lift it well enough. Mm -hmm. It is heavy or it's awkward yeah. more than heavy, I guess. She says, so what are you going to do with that? Eh? You better get there before little bird does. Hmm? Here you'll notice Kiku moving closer mm -hmm. to the topiary. Um, and I do shout to Kiku, like, Kiku, you should not touch that before you've washed up. Haven't you heard what the woman has said? Kiku, do you intend to grab the heart of the forest? I do indeed. Nima, do you intend to destroy the heart of the, of the bramble, rather? <laughs> I do. I think that's the contest roll. Let's talk about the contest roll. If you look on the sheet, it has the rules for it. Scroll over there. When you act against each other, compete or otherwise want to inflict harm on each other, we agree what's at stake. I think what's at stake is, does Kiku get the heart of the bramble or does Nima destroy the heart of the bramble? Then you each gather one light die. If your occupation or background gives you an advantage, you only get one light die, even if multiple skills would apply. Do you think you have a relevant skill here? I think I am trying to misdirect Kiku away from the heart of the bramble here. Which would be a skill. I like that. Um, because you are trying to talk her out of it. Yeah. Let's put her them out of it. Uh Kiku, what do you think? I think that Kiku has been listening to the whispers of spirits of the forest talking to her about this Yeah, I like the idea of the bird. A very wants long it, right? time, the bird right? and wants this is part yeah, of my yeah transformation and f wish fulfillment on their part. So I think either uh, my ritual or other spirits. No, the skills, that's good. Yeah, you both have okay. a light die. You get another light die for each mark of ruin you currently have. Um, I thought Kiku had five, but maybe I made that up. Um, I did, but I also did a reduct. Maybe I, oh, no, I went back up. Yep, that's correct. So. Kiku, you get five light dice, and Nima, you have four light dice. So right now it is six and five in terms of light dice in Kiku's favor. You take a dark die if the contest is inherently dangerous. I think it is. There's a sword involved. <laughs> um, and then you take as many dark dice as you are willing to risk beyond that. Because you roll. You count up sixes. Whoever has the most sixes is the winner. But for each dark die that comes up one, you also mark ruin. So the current stand is Kiku has six light and one dark. Nima has five light and one dark. You don't say how many dark dice you're going to risk in total. You decide that secretly and then plug it into the die roller or contest. Does everyone understand how this works before we go? Okay, I'm locked in. Mike, you're, you're muted. Doing some final math here. <laughs> Percentiles, damn it. <laughs> All right. You're locked in? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Roll. All right. Woof. Uh, 
I guess for people watching the video. Um, I mean, just like <laughs> I rolled a six light and eight dark and rolled, I think, no sixes. You, rolled, you have a six. You, you got one six. You have one six. Oh, it's off the screen. Yeah, it yeah. is off the yeah. screen. And okay. you have one, uh, you have one six and you have one one on a dark. So you, your ruin is going up by one. So you're you're at six ruin. Um and Mima also has one six. So now we have to count fives. Kiku has one, two, three, four fives. And Nima has one, two, three, four, five fives. <laughs> Mima survives and wins. Nima, describe how you destroy the heart of the forest. Um, um, well, Kiku, could you give me like the setup of like how you are? Is that fair? Yeah, so let's, that, let's like, do the scene kind of here. Yeah. I don't mind teaming it. it up, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kiku, once we lock eyes and we realize that we're at odds, she just throws the rag at your face and you see almost a swirl of feathers as I rush towards the topiary. Mm. And I think like Nima has been relatively like emotionless up until this point. And I think that like at this point, like she is it's she's dragging the tip of the sword is behind her as she is just trying to like sprint like as fast as she can and you just hear this like jam curdling uh scream come from her as she runs and hefts the thing up and just like wildly like uh just slams it down onto the berry the berry shatters as if it was gemstone and as the shards of the berry fly out maybe even catching you a little bit on the cheek Nima drawing blood the boy cries out and explodes in thorns and thorns just like stick you all over Nima. Hot and piercing and you feel your warm blood dribbling down. And then the whole bramble is exploding in a torrent of thorns. You hear cries in the distance as people who were on the berry hunt are pierced by the explosions of thorns. The old woman stands up in the middle of all this and raises her hands and says, you cannot hurt me, filthy, filthy bramble. And thorns just like pierce her body and very deeply and she collapses into a bloody heap that concludes ring five let's do epilogues think about your character's conclusion to their story i will tell you that quite a lot of people suffered terrible violence when the bramble went up Think about the future of your character and try not to implicate the other character and tell us your epilogue whenever you're ready. Um, Kiku's epilogue is seconds after this is happening. It's, it's almost in the moment. So um, as Nima, your sword is longer, and gets there first as I'm reaching out for the thing that I've been told will finally transform me into a bird and it shatters you hear a screech echoing your own as kiku's uh attached spirit erupts from her skin and before you is now an angry shrieking crow that is the size 
of Kiku. And you can see uh, just shrieks and claws and feathers as they fly, as the spikes of the brambles are starting to explode in the shrapnel behind them. And as the uh, brambles unfurl, the adder is released and Kiku meets it at the gate, now perched atop it, waiting for God only knows how long before the berry pickers come again. And Kiku will be there to pluck their eyes out like ripe berries. Thank you. Nima? Um, Nima uh, walks, um, walks by after the, the, the crow has has flown away uh, and walks back to the old woman uh, dragging the sword behind her. Uh, she sticks the sword blade like tip first back into the, the rock uh, or the dirt and it, it sinks in um, and her breath is, you know, body is heaving uh, as she breathes after like dragging this thing and just the stress of this entire uh, expedition. Um, shoves the body into the pool of berry juice where it floats and then sinks and it feels like time is actually like lots of time is like this is all slowed down um and uh nima starts just kind of like sits down and is digging through um the the thorns and collapsed rambles and that type of thing and finds a seed uh and you see her just kind of like sit down cross-legged and uh, just kind of clears a little like piece of spot of dirt, uh, drops the seed in and then scoops her hands into the berry pool and pours it um, over where the seed has been planted. Fantastic. Blackberry jam. Let's do stars and wishes uh, for the whole, the whole two shot um stars are things you enjoyed wishes are things that i don't know in this context i guess wishes are just like maybe things you would have uh, alternate paths or something what it might have been interesting uh i really enjoyed this a lot it was really good um it had it really had that like strong fairy tale feeling to it but with that really great like kind of um there was like a certain sort of like folklore ambiguity kind of thing going on which I really loved um I like the idea that Kiku I love the idea that Kiku and Nima are like just becoming the adder and the old woman again right I think that's really great um and yeah the uh, this is a fun fun incursion it, it it has like such an interesting feel because uh perhaps more than some of the other incursions even it doesn't really tell you what anything means it just lays it all out there for you to interact with and make meaning out of it you know which i think is really great and i love that about it um but yeah, everyone did a great job the role play was great the contest role was super fun um and, and very exciting and yeah it was, it was a good time um yeah, also all the stars for all the fun. Um, I feel like this was the first dark incursion I've played in a while where I didn't hit five ruin first. So playing the other side of that was fresh and unfamiliar to me and felt so in line with like Kiku's kind of like social naivete as well. But um, that was a big star for me personally as a player because that was a lot of excellent um role play not quite knowing what's happening <laughs> um i also really enjoyed how i mean we did a really great job of fulfilling our own wish from last uh time in which we wanted our stories to become intertwined and we did such a good job we literally <laughs> wrote ourselves back into the story again which felt like just a perfect full circle like really a uh, fairy tale esque kind of round uh, finish to the whole tale. So, uh, just huge stars for that. Um, yeah, I loved how often we were able to 
reassign like the blackberry juice could be symbolic of blood or power or magic or you really could just as a player interact with that as much as you wanted to or as little as you wanted to creating your own like magic and feel to it so i too think that that's a huge star for that in general i don't know if i have any alternate wishes i think that playing kiku as a language restricted character had both positives and negatives that i might play with going forward but i think overall it just felt really great <laughs> Yeah, I think my only wish is, it's not even a wish because I, I, I loved how it turned out, but like, I, I do think it would have been interesting if you had both taken the basin option, right? Which if it says in the incursion that if you wash, if you wash yourself in the basin, you return home um, and you're no longer in the bramble, like it's like your way out. And that might, that would have been like a very, like, that would have been a very, like, Disney fairy tale ending, right? I think we got the Grimm's, <laughs> the Grimm's fairy tale ending, right? Um, but but it was nevertheless would be an interesting. It's an interesting idea to see, like, okay, Nemo goes back home, and now there's a whole like, you know, did you send me into the bramble? <laughs> like, what is going on Neville here? Right? becomes a huge fight with your parents. <laughs> yeah, like or, uh, but also, but also per the devil's bargain, you you could have washed Kiku, but you still would have ended up at the gate, right? Like that, you know, so. Um, so that was an interesting, like, possibility there, uh, which I thought was really intriguing. I also think it was really interesting because you could have turned down the Devil's Bargain where Damek followed you into the cave, right? Um, now, according to the incursion, Damek always goes into the cave, but I made it into a Devil's Bargain and was going to give you the option of that not being a thing to happen. Um, and so that would have been interesting to see, like, what the confrontation would have been if there had not been that, you know? Like what would have, how would the situation have resolved? That's an intriguing idea to me. Yeah. Knowing you, you just would have made the blue light children into the uh, conflict. <laughs> yeah, they can be. Uh, if mm -hmm. you basically, if you disobey the Lady of the Bramble, the kids will turn on you, right? But you both didn't. And so, um, yeah. Um. So I guess on my part, yeah, I would echo everything um, I, to build upon um, that I think what we're talking about, as well as this whole idea of like this particular incursion, like I thought it was really cool how everyone kind of like picked up on the little flags that like each person was raising. So like Jason, like just picking up our little character flags and like either pulling in like scripted moments or like adjusting some of the, um, yeah, the the arc of the 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 incursion to like make it like really gel with the characters and then for two distinctly different characters to kind of like be um like very effective foils um I thought yeah it was just really fun um yeah I mean a general star like forgive the pun but trophy dark is my jam um <laughs> uh it's how I like to play characters and that type of thing and uh so it just yeah really uh gels there I think like building on that like it was I really like the way that this unfolded and like the the sort of like circular arc of it um I was really interested as well as that if there's like the fairy tale, <laughs> the Disney fairy tale and the Grimm's fairy tale, I think that there's also this like, uh, like, uh, the sort of like a twenty four <laughs> fairy tale, I guess, of like something just like really dark. And I think that that is like I actually think that's where... what we did. I think we did the a twenty four version today. You know, I kind of feel that there's a. The, the one that I'm kind of like the the thread that I was interested that I'm also interested in was like Nima being like the actual like sacrifice and sort of like realizing that she had essentially been grown like the berries like the brambles to fulfill this purpose and I think that that's like less clear maybe that's still there um but I think that there was like a very like direct yeah path well the, for the that. interesting thing is like so you could have taken the berry right and if you take the berry, you become the bramble child. It's mm, like you mm -hmm. you replace the child, mm -hmm. right? And so one interpretation is that, that that's what the family does. The family sends a kid down there to be the bramble child. That's what the old lady was clearly alluding to, right? 
Mm -hmm. um, when she said the last one was a boy. And so maybe that was the Grimm's version, you know, where you take the berry and become the (laughs) topiary, right? Uh, This version actually does feel like the A24 fairy tale version because it could be that the family sent you to be the old woman, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, you know, like that that could, you know, that's, there's like an, there's another meaning there, which I think is, which a meaning that you as a player gave, which I think is really great. So I I, I love that really well. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Any other stars or wishes? Okie doke. Uh, Well, I think we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and wave goodbye.